bringing you a look at a few of the new games from the next set of Paco game, which will be on Kickstarter soon, if not now, if not in the past. Uh, this comes from Chris Handy, and he had a bunch of these, which we have played already, that are released and available mm -hmm. for you to buy. And we are big fans. We really like them. They're right. small micro games. Before this video, we have Jim, Rum, So, and Orc. So you're going to see each one a little breakdown, and then we'll wrap up our thoughts at the end. In this Paco game called Jim, you will be building your team through the children by picking sides in order to play one of five possible, four, sorry, possible events. Right, it ends up being four. Right. Uh, and it's, it's basically mimicking what you would do in actual gym class. Yes. <laughs> uh, and it kind of becomes, it's basically a drafting game for the first half at least, mm -hmm. uh, where you take turns uh, picking kids. And you can play this with two or four players, mm -hmm. uh, which adds a, another layer to it. A two, two teams of two, not four separate individuals. And yeah, the reason that you have these events is some kids are better at other th some things than others. No, and because two of... Each kid usually has uh, two possible events they're good at. Mm. There will always be one kid who's not good at anything. <laughs> right. So there will also be that one kid no one wants. <laughs> right, yeah. So before the games, before the actual game starts, this is kind of like the prep phase, mm -hmm. uh, you'll have the opportunity, depending on which kids you take, to make it more likely that the events you want are going to be chosen. Right. Uh, so if you have a bunch of orange kids in your hand, you're going to want the Make basketball sure the basketball to come comes up. through. And, and then, that, yeah. Each event also has special abilities. Yeah, so, so when we actually play, you can actually think of how to mess around with the field. So what happens is, once everyone has picked, all, all the kids come out. There's 12, 24 total, so each mm -hmm. team has 12 kids. Then you put those away. You have the chosen events. And now it's sort of like uh, an area control kind yes, of thing. Yes, it's ex uh, pretty much you choose to put children on each side, choosing an event based on what colors they are or where you place them, and then uh, play the effects. Yeah. Now, a big thing, though, is it wouldn't be a game about school and kids without bullies. <laughs> right. So you have these guys who are not good at all. However, by either the sports. choosing them in a draft, which makes they are the ones that make it more likely to choose an event to go forward. Or by playing them, you actually get special abilities that involve, uh, where did you put those other two? They're right here, yeah. the coaches. Coaches, <laughs> who will actually make it so they, because I guess they're looking for the bad kids, lock down an area. So if you want to make sure that your, uh, your opponent cannot mess with your team on each side, they can lock it down. Once all cards have been played, you tally the score depending on who won on each side and get points for the actual numbers. So, it, yeah, the, it's, it's a fairly straightforward game, but there is a lot of an, a potential analysis paralysis and also just things can change at any given moment. No, no, it, especially when you're drafting, you're thinking like, because at first you're like picking, then you're like, oh my god, I have a lot of orange. Orange is not up there. Oh, no. You're, you're very often planning for the next ten moves, and usually whatever your plan is, it, nothing looks the same after that, uh, because I don't know if we really explained it very well. Uh, for instance, if you put a kid here, this is, I don't know, let's say you put one that actually works there, because he has orange power to help you on this side. It also lets you take a kid from somewhere else into your hand and put one else back where it was. Right. So there's a lot of different ways you can affect the field. So you may even, I know uh, when we played this last, uh, I actually had the kid who had the two things we kicked out. So I wait near the end to actually make it to switch one of yours out and give you him. Right. So even if you maybe think you didn't draft that well in the beginning, this... Or even if you drafted well, this yeah. thing can totally flip everything up. It's a very, very interesting mechanic for something so small. Game. And the, the theme is, is pretty... No, I think it hits Jim right on. <laughs> you feel just well, like... No, like I said, we have the bullies who actually... Whether they don't care if they're good or not at the sport, they're going to do things. <laughs> yeah. We have the, the one kid who's just not good at it, which is fantastic. We actually have the coaches who actually go around and try to do things. And we have the kids who actually specialize in different areas, which makes sense. I mean... You might not be good at basketball, but you can be damn good at ping pong. <laughs> yeah, that's how I am. <laughs> rum is all about, well, rum and pirates because they go so well hand in hand together. You can't have one without the other. In this game, you'll be trying to capture these cards, which are the captain cards, in order to gain points. If you reach a certain point limit, you win end the game. However, there will be your opponents trying to capture the same captain cards, which actually make them even harder to capture and each time even, they're captured. Even once you've captured one, someone else can still steal it from you. Exactly. So you're never safe. There is also the parrot, 
who will be trying to spoil your day, but we'll get to later. So but basically the way it works is you have a hand and you also have these three cards here, and it's kind of like poker. Where uh, specifically uh, the, river, the river, wherein uh, you anyone can use these cards in addition to what's in their hand. And for example, if you wanted to capture this purple card, currently they all start at level one, you need two purple rum cards to capture it. Right. Once you capture it, then it upgrades to level two, which means if someone else wants to take it, they need three purple cards. And so on and so forth. So the, the harder, you, the more you spend to get something, the more protected it is and the more valuable it is. Right. Because that's also your score at the end of the game. The other big thing is hidden, as I said, the parrot is hidden somewhere in this pile, which you can draw from, and it will also replace cards from here, should you want to take cards from there, mm -hmm. as you build your hand. Right. You can should take you one. find the parrot, which I shuffled in here now, and I'm not going to try to find, <laughs> if it's revealed in this pile, everyone loses a number of cards equal on the timer, which also sets the timer up. Right. Or if you draw it yourself, only you lose it. Now, if the parrot... The parrot, not the pirate, the parrot, is revealed eight times, so the timer hits this pirate ship, which is the eight. The game ends, and it's just whoever has the most points. Yeah, so there's two different ways it could end. So you spend a lot of time in this game. You want a lot of cards to be able to steal from people, but the more you have in your hand, the riskier it is to keep them. Right. So it, it, it is that press your luck thing. Uh, but it's also uh, like you're stealing from each other. It also, again, kind of feels like area control, but in a more... Well, what I think is really cool it's like about things. this game is, first, we forgot to mention the mechanic of which each there are only three single bottles. The double bottles give you, right. you can choose which one to use. If you get, if I got all three yellows, I capture the yellow card no matter what cost it's at, and I move it up two. So currently, if it's at one, it would go up to three, meaning you can really secure a card. Yeah, so that that's like once something is up to like f five or six, that's almost the only way you're going to yeah. get them. The other thing I really liked about this is there's a lot more, but without, at least in my head, too much thinking of keeping track of what your opponents are getting. Like if I notice you're going for those pink cards, like mm -hmm. if you have the pink, I'm like, okay, either he's getting defensive or he's trying to get my pink. Right, yeah. There, there's definitely that some of that to it. Uh, so yeah, this is a really fun one. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Yeah, <laughs> it has. It, we we had a lot of fun playing it, and it it was pretty. It's very simple, but and I I definitely love the press your luck. I didn't feel like it put you back as much because often enough the press your luck hit everyone. Yeah, that's true too. It was it was rare that only one person missed out on something. And even when you lose your cards, you know because it moves so quickly, you're gonna mm -hmm. get more very soon. You never felt too bad about it. Uh, and plus, they're rainbow colors. Yes. We should mention this hits uh, uh, two to four uh, Two people. to four players, mm -hmm. yeah. Which will vary then on the score you have to hit. Right. Because, you know, it would be harder or easier to get certain points. I also love that these cards are the planks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the actual shipwreck. <laughs> this one is a farming game called So. It's for two to four players. You can see there are a wheelbarrow set up here and a bunch of seeds, and you're trying to build the best bouquet of flowers. You're growing flowers. It's very nice. Now, you have a favorite color. I do. You don't want your opponents to know. Oh, I don't. So... <laughs> Where you're assigned, this is two to four players, has a color on the back. So mine is yellow, Jonathan's blue. You don't tell anyone else that. Yes. It's very and secret. Basically, you're trying to get flowers of that color, but all flowers help, but those flower colors will give you the yes. most points. A flower has an option to give you one to three points. Should it not have your color at all, that is one point. Should the outside of the flower, so let's take this one, for example, would give Jonathan two points because the outside is blue. Now, if the center was blue, that would give Jonathan Three points. That's some good stuff. That's oh, some yeah, very that's, good stuff. That's, that's good stuff. <laughs> so the way a turn works is you can see all these rows here. You choose any one that has two or more cards in it, and you pick it up, and then you redistribute it according to the direction of the windmill, which starts clockwise. So for example, if I picked this up, I could then, in whatever order I want, put one card in this pile, and then one card in this pile, or row, or whatever you want to call them. Then, wherever the last card ends up, if it's a seed packet, you flip that seed packet and all other seed packets that match that color. So if somehow it ended up here, both of these ones would flip. As they're both red. And if it's, then they turn into flowers. So you can see that's where the flowers come in. Now, if a flower is the last card you play, should it end in any actual player's wheelbarrow? Because if there's only two people, these two wheelbarrows aren't actually play right. player's wheelbarrows. No matter whose turn it is, that person's, like, if Jonathan moved him into my wheelbarrow, I would collect all flowers of one of those two colors I'd choose. So in this case, I'd probably choose red. 
It, yeah, in and this they, case, it wouldn't matter because they're right. both the same two colors. And it'd go in my pile. <laughs> right. And so if I, the idea is you want to try to make it happen so that the flowers end up in your wheelbarrow on your turn or so that someone else is forced to give you flowers somehow so that you end up with the colors that you want or deprive other people of the colors that they want. Right. So it's a tricky challenge of trying to make sure you get your colors while not telegraphing your colors away. Then, of course, there's also, there is this gopher in the windmill. So if you ever make them as the last card you play, end up on the same space, then you get to trigger one of their abilities. We'll the windmill just flips the direction that the cards go. So you start rotating the other way. Uh, the gopher does some interesting things. Well, the go it depends which side of the card is showing. Right. If the gopher, the gopher is showing, then you choose any line and destroy all flowers in that line. So pretty scary, especially if someone... If you know you someone's going for red. Or white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. If it's on the, and then you flip it. Now, if it's on the other side, which is a wheelbarrow, uh, not wheelbarrow, watering a can. watering can, <laughs> I, I got the W. <laughs> yeah, they can see it. Yes. Uh, I believe that one was you get to take any flower, no matter its place. Right, you can just grab a flower that you want from somewhere, which, which is very Which would be nice. pretty good, especially if you know someone's setting up to get to get a flower. So this is definitely one of the more complex pack of games, uh, and, and I think, you know, as far as complex as the, the game this small and this few components can be, and I think that's to its advantage for, you know, the more gamery kind of gamers. You'll have a lot more to like in here, and it's farming, so you'll yes. be very familiar with the... the I do game. like that this game, I mean, you can tell me wrong, but I feel like... I'll get wrong. Uh, ...doesn't have as nearly as much analysis paralysis. Uh, there is a to, little bit. No, there's a bit. little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, compared to some other things where you could probably waste five minutes... For yeah, everything. depending on what's on the field. Uh, but yeah, it's that, it reminds me a lot of... It's almost like... Uh, I, I think I compared it to tic-tac-toe, where you, you want to... You want to do the thing that forces someone else yes. to help you, and sometimes you might have to ha make do something no, to help someone else. No, in the instructions, they actually say giving an opponent a flower is not a bad move. Right. There could be times where it'll help you more in the long run to give them something. Right. And here we have Orc, which is a territory control battle game for only two players. Mm -hmm. Each side has a team of orcs, and you're trying to conquer the different sections that there are, one for each color in the game. And you're going to have cards in your hand. So, for instance, you're going to want to play orcs to a place, and whoever has the most orcs on each side is the winner once that place scores. If you play two orcs, so whichever side you have facing up is what you're putting there. If you play two orcs somewhere, you draw one card, which is more orcs. From any pile. From any pile you want. Or if you only play one, you draw two cards. Right. Uh, and there are some restrictions, so you can't play the color of the area that it's in. And if, for instance, I if I well, had done this here, you couldn't play another white on correct. this side. Correct, so if you played the green here, this would not be a valid move. Right, you have to choose a different color from your opponent. Uh, and there's some other things like that, but that's, that's the basics. And once a pile runs out, that's when this would score. So in this case, Jonathan would win. Because I put two greens and you only have one yellow. Correct. Uh, so that's pretty much it. It's it's, this is a very, very fast and simple game. It, it, they it's, they so recommend you two play out two out of three because it's going to go quick. Uh, but there is some, there's a decent amount of strategy in no. terms of what to play you, and when. You have to decide uh, whether it's worth putting down the two orcs or whether you want the extra card advantage, which is very interesting a lot of times. You gotta keep track of your color management. I know there's plenty of times when I'm playing where I was just like, oh, I didn't keep track, I only have yellows, and yellow's the only space open. Right, and the other thing is, at the end of the game, you also get points for anything left in your hand if it matches something you conquered. So if I had won the white space, and I have a bunch of white orcs in my hand, I get a point for each one on the cards. Another really big thing is actually the box. Oh. You see, whoever has the territory when close in the direction of the box over here is how ties are broken. Right, so sometimes, uh, because ties are pretty frequent in this game because usually you're gonna wanna lock down a place and there's only four cards in a pile. Uh, that can become, it can be more important to have control of the territory next to the one you want than the one you actually right. want. <laughs> so I know for us, uh, this was uh, what we had was usually the singles closest to the box. Mm. Even though that only gave me one point, I know a lot of times I was thinking, well, that's the closest thing to the box. I guarantee. Like, yeah, and you'll get this space, et cetera, et cetera. So that can be really good. So this is this is a cute one. You know, the theme could be anything, could be any kind of monster fighting or people, but orcs are are, are a nice touch. The, the art's amusing. Yes, <laughs> for each ter different one. The red orcs are more gladiator, green are more like forest archers. White are snow orcs. Yeah. <laughs> Classic snow orcs. You know those snow orcs.
So you've seen four of the games of the new PACA game set that will be coming out soon or already out. <laughs> And I know for this set, uh, they were designing them to make them a bit more heavier and more, uh, I guess, gamery is the phrase. Yeah. And, uh, how do you think he did that with these four? I think he did very well. I mean, you can see they, he, the way he rates them is on a scale of one to three in terms of mm -hmm. difficulty. And I think these are all twos or threes, uh, except for maybe Orc is a one. Oh, no, Orc's still a two mm -hmm. also. Uh, and yeah, it, it is, it's always, it's still remarkable to me how much they do with so little. No, and I agree. And I th out of the, f strictly uh, looking at these four, I think he yeah. did a great job with almost all of them. I do. I, I will say I definitely love rum. Is my favorite. I think. Of them I all. think I agree with you. I'd say rum and then so are my two favorites. Yeah. No. I agree. Uh, rum. I think a part yeah. of the reason. I feel bad though. I think the reason I'm judging Orc lower than those two specifically mm -hmm. is because that one was only two player. Oh. My only problem with Jim is the fact every time we played it, it's just it really allows for analysis paralysis. Like yeah. not the game itself. <laughs> it's just the pro. Like yeah. It's one. It's like. The, there's nothing wrong with it, but as far as these four are concerned, I definitely would probably be the one I take out the least, uh, and pro I think rum definitely the most because that I feel like that is the best balance of complexity and just fun. So I really like again because there's a lot going on in it, but not as friendly. Not that it's very complicated, but for most players, that casual players, mm -hmm. they're probably not going to be as into it. Uh, and then orc is just. How would you fun. compare these? In because you got the you packed the foot. First Kickstarter, right? The first pack the of full games, so, so. ones that came out. And I know there. you've, I've only, you've played more of them than I have. Yeah, I mean, I really like those. Um, I'd say, you know, this is, they're just very consistent. Would you say it's complimentary? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I, I think if if one of these were to replace one of the ones from the first set, you wouldn't notice the mm -hmm. difference. Uh, th it's a very consistent style. They're all, they're all really unique and fun, and the way that they take familiar mechanics and kind of compress them is really very cool. impressive. And I do think, even though these are more complex. I still think they perfectly fit in my mind what the pack of game is supposed to be. Like I could just have rum, or even like the gym or so in my pocket, and if we were like at a dinner table before waiting for dinner, play the game. Yeah, or even orc is really great for that if you're yeah. just going some, well, somewhere with one person, just hanging. Because you're all, you're probably sitting across from each other. Yeah, because they don't take up much space. They're obviously incredibly compact. Like that's the coolest thing about, no. about these. Because I feel like, I definitely feel like a lot of games that say say they're uh, pocket games are like. Well, not really. <laughs> right. This is the ultimate. If you want something to fit in your pocket, this is the real deal. Uh, so we definitely recommend that you check it out. We're fans. Yeah, I can't wait to see uh, the other games that are part of the uh, yeah. second release. Hopefully of they games. continue doing them more in the future. Uh, until next time, though, I'm Jonathan Estes. I'm Will Keeler, and this has been a preview for Pack of Games. Mm.